All right. Um, my name is Dave Ratt, and today I'm going to talk about um, the same sound radiating from multiple sources. Uh, basically, mixing in mono if we have a stereo sound system and we send the exact same signal to both sides, um, or mixing in stereo where we send a different sound to each side. Uh, over the years, I've thought quite a bit about sound reinforcement and the issues that we run into and various solutions. And one of the concepts that I've come up with is that nowhere in nature does the exact same sound radiate from multiple points in space. Uh, whether it's a cow mooing or a waterfall or a woodpecker or um, any sound you could possibly run into in nature, it occurs in a singular point in space or a range or an area. And there is no identical mirror image of that occurring simultaneously somewhere else. Nowhere in nature does the exact same sound occur in multiple points in space. Yet, with sound reinforcement, we do it all the time. We take the exact same sound and we send a cloned mirror image, perfect copy, to another speaker nearby and another one and another one. And when we do that, we create all these, we create a series of issues. You get comb filtering, you get uh, time issues, interference from this identical source. If the sources are different, we're not going to have that problem. We don't have a problem with a cow mooing and a goat baying causing some phase interference that's audible that causes it to sound swishy. But if you take the exact same cow moo and you run it to two different speakers, then it'll cause a problem. So this, this, these phase interference, this comb filtering issue is unique to electronic reinforcement. It's not a natural event. Conversely, the, the opposite of that is that nowhere in nature do multiple unrelated sounds radiate from a single point in space. We don't have the sound of waves and trees rustling and a goat all coming out of a hole in a rock wall. It just doesn't happen that way. We have these sounds are coming from three-dimensional areas, closer, farther, up, down, and yet in live reinforcement or any kind of reinforcement, home hi-fi, we do that all the time. We take a guitar, a bass, a kick, a vocal, put it all together and spit it out of a little round thing. Well, that's a completely unnatural event. Those two concepts, I think, are the basis for creating more audio realism and also for solving, not only solving a lot of problems, but actually giving us a lot of um, uh, solutions or assets. For example, Having the same sound radiate from multiple speakers in a line array is what gives us the dispersion control and allows us to cover the audience. Having uh, the exact same sound come out of two different subwoofers that are spaced apart at slightly different times is what allows us to create a cardioid subarray uh, and also and create the cancellation. So we can use this to our advantage and it also can cause us issues. Being aware of it is the key. So when we're mixing shows, when we've got kick drum run right down the middle, snare drum down the middle, bass down the middle, guitar down the middle, vocals down the middle, and the stereo PA, and we've taken all these instruments, we mixed everything in mono, we want everything to, everyone to hear the exact same thing. Now we've got two speakers recreating nearly or exactly the same thing, and we've created all these issues, these comb filtering, these phase and time issues. So I'm going to demonstrate um, some of that. And to do that, I'm going to use a pink noise source. So I've got two speakers here, little jam boxes, um, wired up into my laptop there. There's a mic right here. And I'm going to play pink noise. The first thing I'm going to do, it's hard for me to mute it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to play mono pink noise. It's going to come out of one of these two speakers. And I'll move it around, and you should be able to hear. Headphones probably will help with this. Um, though it may work on some laptops or other speakers. So I'm going to take a single pink noise source, move it around, and you can hear it move side to side. Then I'm going to go to pink noise run to both speakers. And I'm going to demonstrate some, you should be able to hear the phase interference of the exact same sound, the comb filtering effect, sort of a swish. I'm also going to do 
polarity reverse, pink noise polarity reversed into one speaker and not into the other. We should be able to demonstrate cancellation. And then I'm going to do something that's really interesting. So, let's start with pink noise. Single pink noise source. That little glitch is uh, just a loop starting over again. Okay, that's just one channel. And now here's two. Pink noise coming out of both. Alright, that's the same pink noise source into both. Now if polarity reverse one side. You can see how they affect and interact with each other. This is back to the same signal, same pink noise in the bowl. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two different pink noise sources. So this is a different pink noise generator going to each side. There's no interference. No longer do they... Now what I'll do is I'm going to polarity reverse one of those. Alright, so... With single pink noise source by itself, Mono source, no problem. Once you take the exact same signal and run it to both sides, then we started to get interference between the two. When I polarity reversed the same signal going to both, we were able to cancel it out and hear the uh, significant issues with polarity. But when I went to two separate pink noise sources, they no longer interfered, regardless of whether they're in or out of polarity even though each pink noise source sounded exactly the same. So we have two identical sounds, two different pink noise sources that sound identical to our ears. One set causes interference and the other does not. Now that's a really interesting concept. That means that theoretically, if we're able to do that with instruments at a show, instead of running the exact same kick drum to both sides, if we were able to alter enough stuff about how we mic that kick drum or how we um, reinforce that kick drum, we're going to get different levels of interaction, cancellation. If we take the internal kick mic and the second, we use two kick mics and we put one to one side and one to the other, but we EQ them the same and we use two different types of mics, the sound will be slightly different on either side, but the magnitude of the interference between both sides would be greatly reduced. Uh, that same thing can be applied to dual miking on guitar and other instruments. Uh, that's just one way we can use that uh, concept. Another thing that's um, interesting with that is when measuring a sound system. Using the same pink noise source, a single solitary pink noise source and running to multiple speakers is going to create a bunch of interference issues in your measurements. But if you use multiple pink noise sources and use one pink noise source for the left and another pink noise for the right, you no longer have interference between the left and right. You're actually able to measure the coverage of the system without any um, comb filtering issues. Okay, hope that's interesting and helpful, and I will try and do more soon.